Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Family, friends, foes, welcome back to the features. I greet you all in peace and love with no hatred in my heart. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So before we begin, please like, please subscribe, and please share. As you know, we got a lot of haters up in here. And today we got a very, very, very special guest. I'm very honored to have Mr. Sam Cobb with us today. For those of you who don't know who Mr. Sam Cobb is, he is a black date farmer he's been doing this for over 47 years uh and he is in uh is it hot springs hot springs california mr cobb uh desert hot springs desert hot springs yeah, yes out, just out just outside of palm springs excellent excellent and he has a wealth of knowledge in agriculture and you know over here we express the great importance especially for black folks to get into agriculture, farming, these type of things. So I would love to chop it up with Mr. Cobb and ask you a few pointed questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, we'll see how sharp those points are. All right. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Okay. So Mr. Cobb, you're doing, you've been doing this for almost a half a century now, right? And the very first uh, thing that I want to ask you is, how, why did you choose of all things, um, date farming? Like what, what kind of, um, what kind of, uh, inspires you to do date farming, especially in the United States? Well, uh, I used to work for the United States Department of Agriculture mm -hmm. and, uh, they hired, they hired me as a soil conservationist because mm -hmm. of my background in agronomy. And mm. those of you who do not know what agronomy is, ag agronomy is the branch of agriculture that deals with uh, crop production and soil mm. management. So that's my training. So mm. they hired me to work with farmers. And over the years, as time went by, I got transferred to the Coachella Valley where they grow dates. Mm. And I started working with date farmers. And mm. after working with them through the years, you know, I, I never wanted to grow anything on a tree, but mm -hmm. these date farmers, they really loved their dates. And then mm -hmm. they had these customers that seemed to love dates just as well as they love growing them. And yep. <laughs> over time, I, <laughs> over time, I slowly fell in love with growing dates. Mm -hmm. I came to the conclusion that growing dates is the same as growing cotton or sugar cane or tomatoes or squash or cucumbers mm -hmm. I, I said farming is farming and i'm stuck in the desert i may as well uh grow dates but mm -hmm. the big kicker the big kicker was uh, we would help people start date farms you know we would tell mm -hmm. them the soil they had the best soil that they need how much water the plants require you know mm -hmm. the, the spacing that we recommend the type of irrigation system, whether it's drip irrigation or flood irrigation, uh, mm -hmm. and the type of varieties they should plant. And then I just kept doing that year after year. And as time went by, they started coming back, shaking my hand and thanking me. Wow. wow. And I said to myself, I should take my own advice. <laughs> 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 and so I did. I told my wife, let's sell the house and go buy some land. So we had a, mm. my wife had a beautiful home in La Quinta, mm. California. And mm. we cashed that thing in and took the equity out and went and bought a, a piece of land and started growing dates. And the mm. dates continued to grow and grow and grow. <laughs> and that was more than 20 years ago. <laughs> mm. That was my inspiration. Wow. Well, yeah, because dates is, is very niche. Uh, now, when I did, when I looked up on you, I, I believe that you are like the, are you the only black uh, date farmer in the U.S.? Or one of the only ones? No, I am it. And another you're, gentleman, you're it. <laughs> yeah. I am it. 
Someone else told me, he said, brother, brother, you're not just the only one in the United States. You're the <laughs> only one in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> I said, you may be right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I was I watched some interviews with you and and we didn't see any any, um you know, black people around. It was mostly like, you know, like uh, the uh, white folks and whatnot. And they were take, they were they really respected you and they really gave you a lot of um your 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 due respect. Right. With, with, with regards to your knowledge and whatnot. So you're definitely well respected. How how would some some of um what would you advise for black folk to get into farming? Like how, how would you advise them if they wanted to get into farming? If black people would want to get into farming, mm -hmm. uh, they should start, you can get into it, but there's another level. There's a deep level. I'm in, I'm in the deep end of the pool and mm. to get to the deep end of the pool, you have to know how to swim. So, mm it's best to start as early in your life as possible. Mm. And if you have kids, the best thing that you can do is encourage your children to study agriculture from an early mm. age. Mm. And because it takes a long time to, to, to get this stuff, you know, not to discourage people from farming or gardening. Mm. It's a, it, it's a decent thing. I, I love gardening and I love farming. I really, mm. really love farming. And farming, is it's a lot of fun when you're making money. When you mm. start losing money, the fun mm. leaves immediately. <laughs> 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 I mean, it backs up and it leaves. Yeah. <laughs> <And> misery <laughs> rapidly replaces it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, as far as, uh, and if you want to do it really good, you know, the reason why there aren't more black farmers in the United States right now mm -hmm. is because more black people have not prepared to be farmers. Yeah. And usually the most respected farmers are somewhere around 60 or 70 years old because yeah. they've been in it. They've done what James Brown did. They they paid the cost to be the boss. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and when I was coming through, uh, mm -hmm. as I mentioned in a previous interview, mm -hmm. there was nobody else in agriculture besides me. And mm -hmm. everyone who heard I was studying agriculture told me I was crazy. Man, mm. we just left the farm. What are you doing trying to get back there? You're crazy. You know, especially you know, black don't... folks. Especially <laughs> black folks, right? They're having an aversion yeah. because of slavery and things of that nature, right? So, yeah, you're 100% exactly. right on that one. Yeah. So keep going, Mr. Well, they, so they wanted to go study to be a doctor or a lawyer or, yeah. or engineer yep. or architect. Mm -hmm. Anything, man. What do you want to farm? <laughs> and then life happened. And, you know, you go through life and then you come to the end and you say, you know, I sure miss that farm. There was some peaceful living. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. So many people wish they can get back to their grandparents' house and their, their family property. But unfortunately, it was sold and transferred and whatever. And, mm. you know, uh, dropped down to so many people. Uh, that uh, there's so many names on property that it just becomes a mess and it just, ooh, it's, it's discouraging for a lot of people. Yes. So, to, uh, to get into it, because ooh, it's a mess, but it is yes. possible. And I am trying to be on this end, mm -hmm. an example of a black man farming and being mm -hmm. successful at it mm -hmm. because Quite honestly, a few years ago, a couple, of years, couple, two, three years ago, I heard all this chatter about black people wanting to get back to the land and wanted to farm and, you know, yep. and black farmers, you know, and I went on YouTube and I went on the internet and I started mm. looking for black farmers and I looked and I looked, I said, I'm trying to find somebody whom I can look up to who's doing this, 
there's a few people I want to know how did how did black people get started farming? How did they how did they do it? And mm. man, I kept coming up with zeros. Mm. And I said, Oh no, I think I'm it. I don't think there's anyone who's done what I've done. Yeah. I, because a lot of people, the, even the black farmers who are farming right now and are successful, mm -hmm. they are able. They were able to stand on the shoulders of their dads and their grandfathers and their great grandfathers, and some even all the way back to slavery. There's a few farms mm -hmm. that have been in families since slavery down mm -hmm. down south. Mm -hmm. I really admire them, but I need. I wanted to prove that a person can start farming from nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's been a long haul, man. It's possible. And now I'm finally getting to the place where it, it's happening, finally. And yeah. someday I'm going to have to write the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely need people like you, and we definitely need your knowledge, because th this knowledge that you have is so important for us. And as well as when you're mentioning about black farmers, there there are like there are a few black farmers there online, but we all we hear are, are the horror stories of our black yeah. farmers. They're dealing with racism and you know people slaughtering yeah. their animals yeah. and you know and things of this nature. But you've got you've tapped into such a niche market that people actually need your knowledge, and they're coming to you, and 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 the black is kind of kicked out of the picture, right? Because if you if Absolutely. nobody because you 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 are the, the you are the the guy you are that guy right so are there any like niche markets along with dates because dates are so niche you you, you grow seven varieties right of dates seven different types it, of dates yes we grow seven different varieties of dates and the the varieties of dates that's just the seven that we grow there are yeah. untold varieties of dates, of dates untold yes. And if yes. someone ever tells you the number, they're lying because mm -hmm. no one knows. The reason mm -hmm. is because there are male date palms and there are female date palms. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you, if you'd like a new variety of date, all that you need to do is mm -hmm. eat a date and plant the seed. If a tree mm -hmm. comes up from seed, you're off to a new variety of date that the world has never seen. Wow, <laughs> it's it's really like that? It is exactly like that. Wow. Dates are just like people. They are just <laughs> like people. A man and a woman could have several children. Several. <laughs> My parents had 15. Each wow. <laughs> one will come out different. Each <laughs> one. There's no repeats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How, uh, fortunately, with dates, when you find one that you like, they mm. also produce shoots or suckers. Mm. And the suckers mm. or shoots are an exact carbon copy clone of that tree. Of the tree, so yes. That's how you increase the that's how you increase the variety. You mm. keep the suckers. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. like how, how um a lot of the the horticulturists like they they take like shoots from roses or whatnot and just to kind of multiply the type of Rose or, or like like, like yeah. that type of thing, right? Yes, it's exactly that's exactly the same thing. It's with yeah. dates. You are one hundred percent correct. There's no mystery. Right. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> which which you, brings you me back understand. to the question. The question I was asking, right? Are there any type of niche markets like you tapped into such a niche market that you know people need you? Are there any type of niche markets that you would recommend for people to get into? Well, you have to you have to look into your markets. You have to mm. do re research and find out what do people want. You know, mm. things things change all the time, and mm. it's no mystery. You basically find a need and you meet it. That's how business mm. works. You're meeting mm. a need. So mm. if you find out that people love a certain type of tomato. Because mm. that tomato, if you put just a little bit of salt, man, it goes another direction. And oh, people just can't get enough of it. You know, if yeah. you figure that what that is, the next mm. thing you know, everyone's knocking at your door trying to get your tomato. 
yeah. or your potato or your cherry or your cranberries or your sugar mm. cane or whatever. Uh, mm. So I cannot put a finger on what it is. But mm. one thing that always stands out is quality. Mm. Quality always sells. Simple mm. as that. Quality sells when the prices are high. Quality sells when the prices are low. Mm. If a person grows quality, their stuff will always sell. When the mm. price is really high, they'll say, ha, all these prices are so high. We may as well get the good stuff. Yeah, you're right. Just yes. a little bit more. When the price is really low, so, woo, the prices are down. We can afford the good stuff now. The good mm -hmm. stuff always moves. So that's the mm -hmm. biggest pointer I can give you. Whatever you're doing, do it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> amazing, amazing. But think about it. And one other thing, though, is mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to get it right. That's where oh, the yeah. agricultural knowledge comes in. Exactly every, exactly. every successful farm in the United States, and I'll say even the world, every mm. successful farm has an agronomist on staff. Mm. They all do. If he's mm -hmm. not on staff, he's under contract and he's mm. working on behalf of that farm. Mm -hmm. The agronomist is the person with his thumb or finger on the pulse of the, of the plants and the soil. He tells mm. them when to water, when to irrigate, when to harvest, the health of the plant, you know, when, when he thinks they should be having water, you know, when it's time to irrigate, he, he does all of that stuff. The mm. agronomist is the farmer. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. When I was studying, when I was a young man, I would try to get jobs as an agronomist and people would not hire me. Mm. And now that I'm an old man, I understand why. They said, dude, you want the best job on the property. I don't know you. Why should I put my <laughs> life in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> really like that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you'll know everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so important to go study agronomy and then work in agriculture in the United States. A lot of mm -hmm. people, they'll go to get a degree in agriculture and they head straight to government, you know? Yes. And the government, the first thing they'll tell you is, shut your mouth. Do not make any recommendations to anybody because <laughs> we are liable for every recommendation you make. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I said 30 years working for the USDA and mm -hmm. never made an agronomic recommendation to anyone. It was the most wow. frustrating 30 years of my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All I can say is, well, this, this is what we think. Now, don't, don't quote me on this. You know, I'm, I'm just letting you know what Sam thinks. This is not the USDA, but this is mm -hmm. what I would do. You know, the phrase like that. <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't work out, don't you come back to me. I'm just a friend talking to a friend. And I, I, I wish you well. But mm -hmm. uh, on, you know, when a agronomist makes a recommendation, man, let me tell you, the board of directors are listening. Uh, the, the farm manager is listening. Everybody is listening to that agronomist. Because, yes. Man, jeez. That's an important job. Man, yeah. <laughs> thank goodness I'm an agronomist. I cannot afford to hire me. <laughs> For what I know. <laughs> I, would have to, I could not afford to hire me. And neither could anyone else. I'm not for hire. <laughs> but I'm willing no, to no. help my people. I'm willing to help my people because we need some serious, serious help. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do it in a book or some seminars or something. There's so much to know. And man, until now, there has not been a black person really who can relay it. Because well, a lot of people- That, who, that is crazy. Or, and you've been doing it for so long? 
I've been doing, my website says more than 47 years. Yeah, it's yeah. way more than 47 years. It's like almost 60 years. I counted wow. from the time I was three years old. I've been mm. interested in agriculture and I have never let it go. Wow. I'm 62 wow. today. I'm 62, so that's 59 years that wow. I've been a student of agriculture. <laughs> M Mr. Cobb, uh, you, you mentioned some very important points about um, helping Black folk and whatnot, especially with this this particular issue of agriculture. I think this, and I've said this many times on, a ch on the channel, on the Features channel, that uh, agriculture should be front and center for Black folks. We have to have some sort of food security going on within the Black community, yeah. right? So people yeah. like you, we need to get your knowledge. It's very, very important, right? And um, yeah. I'm going to share your website on our channels at samcobfarms.com is com as well. But also you have seminars, right? Like you do like, um, what is, what do you do? You do like, uh, like seminars, like or tours or something are, like that? Yes, we offer tours at our educational farm tours at our, our date farm on Saturdays. And then again on Thursdays. Uh, hmm. so, so we definitely, you can find we definitely out that, 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 we have to we have I'm to get some, some we have to get some people out there to your farms to your farm as well as um we we have to find some ways for you to share your knowledge to black folk right now what's happening for at least the last uh, two decades or so you know you know probably even better than me is that there's been a heavy um like a, a more like a type of exodus away from youth trying to study agriculture and whatnot because they're trying to get into the, the STEM um, courses like science, technology, you know, um, uh, engineering and math <laughs> yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, right? Uh, they're, they're trying to get into yeah. that. So this has caused an aging effect on the agricultural sector, right? So over here in Canada, they have um, like subsidies for people to study farming, right? Is there anything like that do you know of in, in the States, particularly for Black folk? I I think things <clears throat> are moving in that direction. I'm, I know mm -hmm. here in the state of California, they are mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me offering incentives for for new farmers to get mm -hmm. to get going. But mm -hmm. yeah, they need to they need to get vocational agriculture back into schools. I think that yes. would be the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. They took it out for all the reasons you mentioned. But mm. vocational agricultural training was, it was big, man. That was in the future farmers of America. And, mm. you know, one of the things they trained me in is, believe it or not, public speaking. Wow. So I'm speaking <laughs> publicly right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, I, was on, I was on the debate team. They taught me how to debate, how to communicate, how to get my point across and Mm. You know, you know how to how to mention my point and wait for the other person to get their point out, and then let the people make a decision. You know, you have your say; they have their say. Now, everybody, what do you think? You know, mm. how to be civil? How how to have a civil conversation? <laughs> wow! And all of that is just angry. I had no idea when I would be using that. I didn't think I would ever use it in my life. And here it is 40 some odd years later, and I'm using what they taught me. Mm. Mm. I'm glad I stayed in there. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I was, right. I was so good at it, Mr. Bilal, that uh, mm -hmm. Bank of America, Bank of America paid my way through college. They, oh, wow. Season. Yeah, all the way through. I had, I mean, I was in Fresno. That's mm. where I'm from, Fresno, California. And mm -hmm. Bank of America gave me a scholarship to go to school in my hometown. I always had money wow. in my pocket. I did, you know, it, I grew up in the agriculture region. So, you know, I just went down the street to the school. I didn't go across and, the country. I didn't go across the world. Around what year was that, Mr. Cobb? Around what year? I was in the 1980s, from 1980 to 84. <clears throat> I graduated wow. in 1984 out of Fresno State University. You wow. know, Bank of America, they paid me to go and receive a degree in agricultural education. Mm. I said to my, 
ag, I said to my ag instructor, I do not want to be an ag teacher. And mm -hmm. he said, Sam, 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 go to school, you know, take their money, go to school, get yeah. the degree, and then go do what you want to do with your life. Yeah. I said, oh, you can do that? They said, yes, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> So I took their okay. money and I went to school. Turned out to be an absolutely fantastic degree. The, the mm -hmm. things I learned, it was just like, you know, a, a chipmunk or something, squirreling away nuts. I was just putting away information. Yeah. I thought it was a waste of time. And now that I'm an older American, I look back, I said, gracious, that was a good, that was a good training. That was a good education mm -hmm. because they trained us in animal science. Plant science, ag mechanics, you know, how to keep all of our equipment going and everything. Mm -hmm. And then it trains us in ag economics, you mm -hmm. know, the economics of the farm, the, which is the business of, of farming. Exactly. You know, and, exactly. and how That's things it. are taxed. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Schedule F form that we have to fill out, we have to do it. had to take a class called farm accounting, and we had to make the oh, books balance and all of that. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so it turned out to be great. I, I still do my own taxes today. <laughs> Miss, Miss Maxine doesn't do them for you? <laughs> huh? Mrs. Maxine doesn't do them for you? No, they're, they're too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, I, have a, I have a brother who's a, a CPA, thank goodness. So every oh, now wow, and then excellent. I yeah, every now and then I bounce things off of him, and mm. I find out that I'm I'm still right on track. You know, he doesn't do my taxes. He doesn't look at, look at my books. He just tell me, uh, yeah, do this, do that. Well, go study this. I said, what do you mean? Well, keep reading, you will find the answer. <laughs> 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 and he's right. After a while, the light comes on, and, and it makes sense. And now I'm over the hurdle, but. Uh, I got stuck a couple of times where his uh, his true uh, uh, accounting background really helped me out. So mm. props to my brother, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, Mr. Cobb, I'll let you have um, any final thoughts that you want to share with us and any, any other knowledge or, or tips you want to share with us before we um, close it out. All right. Well, uh, I would you know, may as well leave some uh, words of encouragement. That's uh, kind of mm -hmm. what I do in life. I've always been one to encourage people. So mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage those who are interested in agriculture to um, uh, learn uh, agriculture. And there's mm -hmm. one class that uh, in particular that I would encourage people to take. I was encouraged not to take this class because everyone around me said that that's a hard class. If you can skip that class, skip it. And mm. what, what it was is that class was the foundation of agriculture scientifically, and mm. they were not interested, so their brains was always turned off. And that class mm. is organic organic chemistry. Oh, wow. I did, I did not take organic chemistry but now mm -hmm. that I'm late in my life and I'm deep in business, I said, man, all I'm doing is organic chemistry. I wish I understood it a lot better. But mm. praise God for some friends who do understand it. And mm. they uh, they share information. And, you know, I have, <laughs> the guy in <laughs> the laboratory, he understands the stuff. And I said, man, I really enjoy talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you if you if you have your kids go go to school, make sure they take organic chemistry organic. because yeah yeah because and you you just can't jump right into organic chemistry. You have to build up to it. You know, chemistry mm. one, chemistry two, and then organic chemistry. So, mm. but that's you'll learn the lifeblood of the plants and how they function, and then you'll mm. that's how you'll learn to be a good farmer. It seems like you know. That would not be the case because, but it is. And then, you know, learn all your lessons. You'll learn about buying land and opportunities will present themselves 
over time oh, wow. and continue to grow good stuff. As you continue to grow quality stuff, you know, the mm. opportunities for land will present themselves. Just stay at it and let people know that you're looking for land. You just let people know. And eventually something will break your way. Just keep living. Because as I've lived in life, I found out that people who hold on to land before it's all over, they have to let it go. They Mm -hmm. either get old, they die, they get transferred to their kids, and they say, I don't want this. And then they sell it. It's a trip. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Things happen. And sometimes you have opportunity to go to new land and open it up even and become a pioneer and that's what i've done on some ground i had yes i pioneered some ground so hey study agriculture uh, learn your lessons and see if you can find a mentor in agriculture and i will try to well we we, we still have you mr cobb so we'll be we will be sending uh, our people to you for sure. <laughs> okay. And I, I I really hope you don't mind. I really hope you don't mind because you are yeah. honestly, you are a very, very big inspiration. And that, and that is not like fluff, <laughs> fluffing your ears or anything like that. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart, right? With the, from the well, first time I, I, I read about you and when the brother uh, Naeem, he sent me your, your information because I never heard about you. And I just went and I, and I, I was like, such in such awe of what you were doing out there in um in uh California <laughs> right so oh, and uh, and and uh and I think I told you this before but I can't I can't say it enough if I say it a hundred times it still wouldn't be enough right and, and I mean that I really mean that and I really hope that we can get you back on in the future sometime I hope that you'll you'll honor us with your your presence again in the future I hope I really hope so hey I, I, I'm, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will because you have uh, a platform that reaches many people who are interested in the things of the earth and plants. And if people are interested in hearing, then hey, I'm interested in, in helping. So thank you we'll so much, Mr. Cobb. Thank you so All much. Right, thank you so much for blessing us with your time. And uh, I won't keep you any longer. And we hope to hear from you soon. Okay. Have a great day. You too, you too. All right, bye-bye. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her, and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you, we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs> <laughs>